Okay, so just to um, show you an example of um, how these animated stamps work, this was the very first uh, couple projects that I made, and I purchased this little, uh, I think they call it the small envelope set on Amazon. It was, I think, $6 and change, so fairly inexpensive. Just wanted to try it out, and after I made this, I was hooked and I bought uh, a bunch more from Motion Crafts. So basically how this works is um, you've got the animation grid and a special stamp that combined when you slide one across the other, you see that stamp animate. So here you can see the heart blinking, growing, and sliding, moving across. And this, this is super cute because it's actually um, large enough to hold a gift card. So um, that's how I, I plan on using it. And I think just it snazzies up a uh, gift card holder and um, makes it a little bit fun too. So, so that was that project. Um, and this set is super versatile because even if you didn't want to do the animation, um, just having these little gift card holders is uh, really nice too. So you can make your own custom gift card holders as well um, that have nothing to do with the animation. So that's sort of one of the things that I look for when I purchase die sets is how much use am I going to get out of it and if I can find ways to use it in different uh, either types of projects or different purposes, then I'm more likely to buy it. So even though this is super unique, the animated stamps, being able to kind of use it just for everyday normal um, gift giving is really uh, made this a no-brainer for me anyways to purchase. Plus it was a really good price point. So as I showed you earlier, this um, is the set that I'll be showing today. And I did already make one project and I made it uh, more or less how they um, have it shown here. So you've got a um, three inches by four inch mini card. This is one of their photo frames with um, the XOXO cut out of the frame. So they have a die for that. One notable difference between these photo frames and the ones that I got from Sizzix is that the uh, die for the frame is is uh, solid at the bottom here. So um, you cannot cut both the frame and the um, little word caption at the same time. Whereas with the Sizzix frames, there's actually a... Um, a chunk of metal that's missing out of the bottom of the frame and it's just enough space for you to comfortably put in the little uh, word sentiments and then that way you can run everything through in one pass and have your completed frame so in this case it's a, it's a little extra step it's not a ton of extra work but basically you have to run this through twice once to get your photo frame and a second time to um, die cut out the words or the sentiment into the frame. So just one little difference, but um, not, a, not a huge deal. And so um, I've got that, put that back later. And I, um, because it only comes with the one stamp, which is the animation stamp of the owl, I did have to supplement with uh, my own set of stamps. And this particular one I'm using is, I got it from scrapbook.com and it's really cool. It's got different animals, cute little animals. There's the owl. And then it has um, little quirky sentiments that uh, relate back to the animal. So you've got happy birthday and a little bunny rabbit thank you very much, and a little teddy bear. So cute, really cute, fun little, um, you know, quirky animal uh, related sentiments. Then 
when you open this, there's your owl kind of dancing, flapping its wings, hopping up and down. So that's um, the animation stamp that came in the kit. However, um, you may notice that I've stamped it with blue ink and my animation grid is blue. That um, blue animation grid does not come in the kit. The kit does come with an animation grid, but it's black. Um, and so this is perfectly fine to use and you could probably still use it over a colored stamp image, but it's just not as crisp of an image as if um, you were to actually uh, stamp and have an animation grid that's about the same color. So in order to get a, a custom colored animation grid, you do need a special die that will cut out your animation grid. And so when you cut this out, you'll get something like this. And this did come, you can purchase this separately as a single die. And however, some of their kits and sets do, do come with a um, die to cut your animation grid. So I actually have two of their kits and um, they each came with a custom die to cut out a custom grid. So I did use that for this project even though the die to cut that d didn't come with the kit. And um, but that's pretty much it. So um, cute little project. What I'm going to be doing for today though Using the same kit, I'm going to try to do a um, top folding um, card. So the animation grid is actually going to move up and down. And I'm actually going to um, do a couple of different things that hopefully work out. Because this is going to be the first time I'm doing this. So, um, so we'll see. Um, the other thing I really like to do when, when I'm when I have a new kit is just try to explore and see how much I can really customize and and kind of operate beyond just what um, how it's supposed to be used. So I've already got this piece cut. One thing that um, I don't know if they ever mention it in their tutorials. I I haven't seen anyone mention it, but before I even purchased the second order of motion craft um, supplies, I already knew what I was going to do was um, with the custom animation grids that you can cut, I already assumed that I would need to put some acetate behind it um, and possibly in front of it too. But right now I'm just going to put a piece behind and see if that's enough. The reason being that these little lines are super delicate. So you can see how fine of a grid that is. And since this piece moves back and forth, um, for one, I wouldn't want it to get caught on anything. So having some acetate will kind of smooth out the back and have it glide a little bit nicer. And um, it is this is glued down. So you, you can't um, kind of accidentally have it get caught on something from the front side either. And that might be a reason why I put a second sheet over the top. Um, I haven't decided if, if I'm going to need the second piece of acetate or not, but I have one cut just in case I do. So, um, so that's one thing that, that I would recommend. I don't see that in any um, instructions that are listed anywhere. So... That might be something that um, maybe people are doing, they're just not, it's just so obvious <laughs> that they're not making special mention of it. But uh, I thought I would mention it because I uh, haven't seen that other people have. So that's one thing. Um, the second thing that I sort of discovered was that, let's see, let me bring this back. So. 
it's hard to it's hard to see with this one it but um actually you can see it a little so right the first couple of um lines they're a little bit sort of wonky and part of the reason for that was that I did have to run um, the dye through once or twice and then I realized I'd already take it, started to peel it back and realized that it didn't cut through completely so I had to kind of very gingerly fit everything back in and give it a second pass and that meant that some of these lines got ever so slightly shaved down a little bit and um, so they are a little bit wonky and in this first one I didn't even though I did use acetate I didn't glue the grid down to the acetate like I did for this one. So um, the tip here is make sure that if you have a machine that has a precision plate or um, if not you know maybe add some extra shims really run it through three four five times um, just to make sure that it cuts all the way through uh, without, you know, kind of taking it out and trying to realign it. That's going to give you um, really nice, even lines and um, good, clean cuts. The other thing is that um, I would definitely suggest using a solid core cardstock because once this cuts through, if you do see some of the white, um, it's going to interfere a little bit with the animation. It'll probably still look good, but I think it would look better if you have solid core cardstock so you get that color all throughout. So a couple of tips there. Okay, so then how do you start to assemble one of these? Um, I'll bring out the die set just so that you can see the pieces, but I have cut everything already. So you'll need um, this large frame here. This cuts out um, the front of your card and two arms, which will hold your animation grid. And if you're not custom cutting one, and you're using the grid that's provided in this package, which you can buy more of separately. Um, once you've used all of this up, you can definitely um, purchase this in packs. I think it comes in packs of five. Um, and so you would just, you know, cut it down to size, whatever you need. And then um, one thing that you would just need to make sure of is that you are orienting the lines in the same direction that your animation stamp um, is oriented. So for example, in the case of the owl, see how there's kind of stripey lines that go up and down? So you want your animation grid lines to go up and down as well. Because if you did this, nothing Nothing is going to happen regardless of what direction you move this. Um, the reason this works is because basically the lines on your animation grid kind of fill in those gaps that you see in the stamp. And that's what creates a uh, full image. So that's why you need these to line up. So that's key. So make sure um, when you go to, if you cut your own piece or you're cutting it from a larger um, piece that, that they provide, just make sure that you're orienting your grid lines in the correct way. So you need one of those. Now, if you watch their tutorials, um, they have these kind of really broken down very easily. So that this is like their step one. Their step two is to cut out um, what's going to be the inside of the card. And so this piece right here it is noted in the instructions for that come in the kit. And it's cut at five and three quarters by four. And along the five and three quarters, 
you want to go ahead and score and fold in half. So that's going to be at 2 and 7 eighths. Just score and fold in half. So that being done, you could, the way that they do it is they have um, the window, this window right here. They have this cut from out of the front and on the inside and that way from the f even from the front of the card before you open it you see the animation stamp and I've chosen not to do that just so that um, that fun bit of animation is a little bit of a surprise so what how they have it is that they have the front you know this would be cut out straight through so that you can actually see um, this as well and you could definitely do that um, and they have instructions on their videos for um, doing exactly that but I've decided that um, I kind of like that surprise element so um, so I don't do that I only cut the frame out of this side and that's gonna be where our animation grid is gonna sit and it's going to be where we're going to stamp our animation stamp back here. So remember, I'm doing a um, top folding card. So my, I'm going to be orienting my card this way. So that's piece number two. Before I put anything together, I'll um, show you all the pieces. Piece number three is going to be the back of the card. And if you watch their videos, they say to use the seam die that you use to cut piece number one, die cut a second one for your back piece, and then just snip these arms off. I don't do that because that's just a waste of paper um, because you're going to be cutting these weird arms into this whole section of cardstock here that then you're going to trim off, whereas um, this is just a plain rectangle, so it's easy enough to hand cut a rectangle on a paper trimmer or a guillotine. There's no real need to use your, your die for that. So the measurements of this piece, this back piece, are um, four inches tall by three and uh, what is technically five sixteenths. Um, that's what I measured this um, out to be. You could probably get away with three and a quarter if you want, didn't want to deal with sixteenths of an inch. And then you just score at the three inch um, mark. So four inches tall, three and five sixteenths, um, score at three inch. You could probably even go three and I haven't tried it, but I'm assuming you could go three and um, instead of cutting less, three and a quarter, you can go up and score or cut at three and three eighths if you if working with eighths is a little bit easier than sixteenths, but either way you score at three. It's just this is just a glue tab really. So you may want to go a little bit more rather than a little bit less just so that you can have um, enough stick to adhere that to your card. And then from there, it's um, mats and layers. Um, how and where do you line up the uh, frame? Because there is this rectangle die, which will cut out your frame, which is perfect, uh, perfectly sized for the inside of the frame. So your photo frame um, is perfectly cut to for this opening. The way that I, what I've uh, measured this out to be is, because um, one of the things that they make special mention of is the fact that these arms are positioned such that there's actually more room at the bottom um, than at the top. So this, this window here is where all the animation is going to happen. But when you look at the space from the top of the card to the bottom of this arm, the bottom of the card to the top of this arm, they're not equal. So this, this gap here is not centered um, uh, along the top and bottom. 
So I measured this out to be from the top, the bottom of this arm is at 5 eighths inch. From the bottom of the card to the bottom of this arm, it's three quarters of an inch. So knowing those dimensions, all you need to do um, when you position your photo frame is just aim to put this, this die, your aperture die, somewhere in the middle um, of, you know, five eighths from the top and three quarters of an inch from the bottom. And then you center it left and right, which is about, give or take, about half an inch on, on either side. So that's how I do it. Um, they uh, have it such that in their instructions, you kind of attach everything and then just, you know, using using the photo frame like this, you know, they have you lining up the die like this. But if you did that, and maybe I'm not watching their video closely enough, but if you did that, you're cutting from the back side of your paper and that means that you know the um, if you have plates like I do that have that are all scratched up and stuff you're gonna end up with the pretty side of your paper being all scratched up because normally the side of the paper that is touching the cutting edge is gonna be a prettier edge so I prefer to die cut from the front um, but when you have it looking like this, then you can't see the arms anymore. So that's why I just have the measurements. And I've got my own like little cheat sheet of notes that I just write all of these measurements down on a little scrap sheet of paper and I leave it in the um, um, folder that all of this comes in. And then the next time I go to use this, I'll have all of these measurements. I don't have to figure it out each time. Okay, so um, plus I kind of like being able to die cut everything when it's in individual pieces because uh, in her videos, the motion craft videos, she's die cutting through um, three layers. So if you wanted the front to also have an aperture that sees all the way through, um, how the video in um, on the motion craft site is um, instructing you to do this is to actually attach these two pieces, fold this down, and then die cut all three at the same time. I don't know that this die will be able to handle that in my case because I'm using 120 pound cardstock for this base. For anything that's interactive or any of my pop-up cards, I like to use 120 pound cardstock as a base because um, it just feels sturdier, everything is going to move much more nicely and smoothly, and um, even though I have a large platform Fun Stamper's Journey Platinum die cutting machine, which has a lot of pressure, um, I don't know that it's going to be able to cut through, you know, three layers, um, including a 120 pound card. So um, being able to just have the measurements, line things up, and, and cut them individually is sort of a nice option. Okay, so that's basically all our pieces. The last piece is just a uh, uh, matte layer for the front. And I just cut this so that it's one eighth of an inch smaller than um, the final card size. So the final card size is three inches by four. So my matte layer is two and seven eighths by three and seven eighths. Okay, so we've got all of our pieces die cut and we are ready to assemble. So um, first, let me go ahead and put my front matte layer on and I won't decorate this card in full. I'm just going to get enough pieces together so that you can kind of have an idea for how these come, how to create one of these. And I really like on such a small um, size card to go with a small, a smaller uh, white margin all the way around. On a normal A2, I would probably leave 
1 8 inch all the way around, but this is going to be 1 16 all around. So that's our front, and I have to keep reminding myself this is going to be a top folding card. Then your second piece, which is the inside of your card, you can go ahead and attach uh, that to the back of the front. So I'll bring out my tape runner again and get this done. And this is cut so that everything is flush, so there won't be there won't be a white border at all. Oops. Okay. All right, and you. We'll notice, notice that uh, where this is folded, it doesn't line up with the fold of the first piece, and that is exactly what it should be. So don't worry if you see that. Okay, so um, we can put our animation grid on now. And I'm going to be running the animation lines side to side. So the lines are going to be horizontal and it's going to move, uh, it'll be pulled up and down. So I am just going to trim this grid piece down to size because it's a little bit larger than what I need. So. Just gonna give it a little bit of a trim on this side. And so just about fits. So I think that works. Um, you really only need it to be big enough to fit on your arms. So I might trim it a little bit more. And I'm putting um, there we go. That looks good. Okay, and I've already got some double-sided adhesive tape on my animation uh, on my arms here. So I'm going to take those off. The one thing that you really want to be sure of is that um, your grid lines are straight. So you want it to be basically parallel to the um, window that you cut out. So I, I line it up with the bottom straight edge and here. you could also use your your mat too if you want to line it up that way whatever whatever is easiest I might have to really get over this over top of this to really see eventually what I might do is just do this so that I can be sure that it's centered and then I'm going to fold this down. So um, I'm going to trim a little bit more off of this edge. All right. 
and then um, and then you need to put your then you can put your back piece on so the way that the back piece attaches is you've got your front um, if you're doing portrait it'll look like this if you're doing top folding landscape it'll be like this but either way this is your front you'll open it up this is the decorative piece of the inside of your card then you've got your animation grid on its arm to attach the back here's the hinge that's going to be your glue tab you're going to sandwich the animation grid between your back piece and the inside decorative layer and your glue tab is going to glue to that decorative um, paper and that way your animation grid on the inside should be able to move freely because there's no there should be no adhesive touching that so I've already got some double-sided adhesive uh, on the back of this so I'll just peel this off so that hinge is going to be attached to the inside layer with my animation grid sandwiched between it. So I'm just going to line that up. And push it down. And you could flip this out, you know, so that it's out of the way. And I'm going to give that a good burnish. So there we have our card folds, closes completely, the animation grid moves freely, and now we're ready to stamp our image. So what you can do is fold that out of the way just so that you can see where your frame is and give yourself some tick marks. Um, the other thing, the other thing that I've done to kind of help myself a little bit is I just die cut from some scrap paper that aperture, and I just slide that back here, and then that way I can kind of you know, you know, you can even move that out of the way, but then you can kind of move this frame, your scrap paper frame, so that it's all nicely lined up with um, the front frame. And once it's all lined up, you can just hold it in place. And you kind of know where where you need to stamp your image. So that's another little tool or template that template that I make for myself and I leave in the kit but if you don't want to go to that trouble then just swing this out of the way it's a little hard to get in there because the this won't open all the way but it's possible you just go in here and just make yourself some tick marks just so you know I just do the four corners so I know where the edges are going to be and then um, once I have this opened up, then I've got the little lines that indicate where where I'm stamping. So just want to make sure that you've got your card oriented the way it's going to open so that you can be sure that you're stamping <laughs> in the right direction. So this is going to be top folding, so I'm going to open like this. and. One of the things that um, they do note, and I've seen um, to be true as well, is that once you glue this back piece on, it creates this, um, there's where the glue tab is, um, creates a little bit of a catch point where your animation grid might get caught on there, and that might prevent your grid from sliding smoothly so you can take some washi tape but I'm just using just some clear 
clear tape, scotch tape, and this is a little bit wider than I need. All you need to just do is tape, just regular old tape, um, just lay some tape down right over that hinge piece and but not you know into your aperture here and that makes this really nice and smooth now so you don't have that rough um, difference in uh, height so then your this animation grid can glide over very smoothly and I missed just a little bit on this end so I'm gonna put another little piece there so um, once you have everything together, you can just every once in a while just kind of move things around, make sure things are opening and closing smoothly. Um, okay, so then I am now going to do some stamping. So because I cut my animation grid um, out of this pretty blue paper, um, I can actually uh, stamp in blue as well. So that was one of the reasons for die cutting this out of blue was so that I can um, kind of coordinate the stamp with the paper. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and get some ink. So I'm going to be using Salty Ocean and I'm actually going to use, um, just to make sure that I have this oriented the right way. Okay, so stamping like that. I'm going to use a um, heart stamp that came out of a different set. So this came out of their animation tag. Uh, set. It's a little um, growing heart. And then I'm going to actually stamp my own custom animation using the um, words happy birthday. And that set of stamps just came from this uh, scrapbook.com, which I think was like the free gift that they give you when you order. Um, your first order. So I'll show you how to make your own custom animation using uh, sentiment stamps. Now what I think I'm gonna do is use my stamp positioning tool. That way if we need to do this multiple times we can and Go ahead and get this lined up um, and you could definitely before you attach this to your card uh, the back panel you could figure out you know where this frame is stamp it and just make sure that it looks good and and everything before attaching it to your card and then that way if it's just a little bit of extra insurance. If it doesn't work out, then you can always do it again. Um, okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna, and these are all gonna be horizontal, so I just wanna roughly figure out how, where to line everything up. Make sure that there's room for everything. So happy. Yeah, I think I think it'll all fit. It's gonna be a tight squeeze. All right, so that looks good. I'm going to get the heart in first. Take 
one more time. I don't think distress inks are always the best to stamp images with, but this is the... I don't have a lot of colored inks for one, and this is the one that's closest to the coordinating solid cardstock that I have. So that's what I'm going with. Nice and dark. It's pretty good. Maybe one more. This is not the juiciest of ink pads either. Okie dokie. So that's done. Okay, so here's the part that's a bit of an experiment. So what I've done, I did dry run this, so kind of, it does work, um, but I haven't done it on a full project yet. The same die that I used to cut out this custom colored animation grid, I cut out of some very thin, flimsy, flimsy acetate. If you have um, really thin packaging, um, you could use that as well. And I rubbed it down with some stays on black ink so that um, I can see it. <laughs> I can see the actual grid lines. And so what I'm gonna do is I am, it, this got torn a little bit. I don't know if you can see that on the one end. Um, so some of the grid line is a little bit chewed up I will just show you on this scratch face here, see? So that part up there is a little bit torn, so I'm, I'm going to use this bottom part, which is still nice and, nice and pristine. And the reason to use something so thin is so that you can stamp through it. Because we're basically going to... Um, use this to create our own animation stamp and what I'm gonna do is just line this up so that what I'm gonna do is kind of line it up so that I know that it's in alignment with the heart parallel to the heart so I can just kind of get it so that it's got um, filled in with the gaps there and I'll just go ahead and use some washi to tape this down and then I'm going to get my happy stamp and put it right over that. I'm actually going to put a little bit more tape down to hold this nice and firm. Okay. Just 
just gonna gingerly take all this up. And the reason is because I want this to blink from happy to birthday, happy birthday. So to get that sort of effect, I'm gonna move my animation grid so that it covers, um, the lines cover the word the where happy was stamped so that when I look between the animation grids see how you can't see the word happy that's because um, the grid lines are covering that word so when happy is hidden then you'll see birthday and then when happy is shown then the word birthday should be hidden so that's that's the effect I'm going for. So let me hide the word happy. Just want to line it up so that you can't see the word anymore. And just get this side down. Okay, so all right, I'm just peeking to see how low I can go. This is going to be a really tight squeeze. I might have, I should have gone higher with my the word happy. Probably, but we'll make it work. So I think I'm going to have to do something. This is going to be tight. Is that good? All right. This is. Oh, I hope it works. <laughs> And I did try this with like a piece of cardstock animation grid. The cardstock is just too thick. This this thin acetate works really well. You don't have to like super press really hard, and um, it uh, seems to ink through without too much issue. Okay, so I've got all of this in. All right, I am going to now erase my little pencil marks. See, my word happy could have gone up more, but I can see that everything is within the little tick marks that I made so hopefully you can see everything this will be the moment of truth here okay close this up okay so let's see there is this up so get this good blemish right. so as you open it you can see the heart 
rows and there's happy birthday blinking back and forth happy birthday so that's pretty cool so that's how you can actually create your own um, animated stamps and I mean I don't know how to do all the fancy stuff with the growing heart but if you just want your sentiment to kind of blink um, on and off and alternate then um, this works pretty well so there you can see the word happy just try to tilt this just right or the word birthday and here's the word happy so one of the things with um, if you did have the front window you could actually see like more of the animation as it slides because you, you could be seeing it change as you open it um, so that's another um, thing to consider so to wrap this up, um, I do see one of my grid lines moved a little bit, so I'm gonna nudge this a little. And uh, I'm actually, I am gonna go ahead and put that second piece of acetate over um, right here. And that's going to protect that from getting I'll just put it right over this. That, that'll protect this entire um, animation grid from getting jostled about from either the front or the back. And for this, I'll just go ahead and tack the, um, I'm not gonna put glue on the individual um, grids. I'm just gonna put some acetate or some double-sided adhesive tape uh, around the borders. When I glued this down to the initial uh, first piece of acetate, what I did was I just put some glue, I can still see the glue, I just put some glue on my hand, that trick that you've seen people do, and then just tap, tap, tap uh, the animation grid right over so that it just gets a very fine amount of glue without it sort of oozing onto your acetate, at least not too much. It dries clear but you still, on, on super clear acetate, you can still see it. So just getting that very light amount of glue um, works really well. So yeah, so I would definitely recommend if you're gonna custom cut your own animation grid, uh, definitely line both sides with some acetate just to protect those really fragile grid lines because it is a moving piece and so you don't want it to get caught on anything and especially if you are cutting a window all the way through to the front and it's possible that somebody kind of runs something across the top of this on. A little bit bigger than what I need, so I'll just trim. Okay, so then the last thing that I do is um, you want to attach the, your back piece. It's a, only attached currently on this glue tab. But if you notice, there's a little bit of room on the um, top and bottom of um, your arms here to lay down some more glue and, um, and get it attached there. Otherwise, it's just gonna be free floating. You can't put glue on any of this arm mechanism because this this piece right here it needs to move back and forward. 
So um, the only place that you can put glue is where um, you see the inside of your card, where you see that exposed. That's really the only place that you could put glue. So I'm just going to put some liquid adhesive. I've got a precision tip and I'm going to stay, you know, kind of closer to the outer edge and try not to get too close to the mechanism. And on the top side, it's even, it's even harder because there's not that much room, um, but I'm still going to put some. That way it closes this card off. And if you're worried, you can always just kind of give it a little smear. That way when you push it down, it doesn't, um, you don't have to worry about it kind of oozing towards your sliding mechanism. So I'm going to just push this closed. The animation does tend to look better the closer the animation grid is to the stamp. And so that's the other reason to really close this off so that you can keep those two pieces nice and So there you have it. Um, so just wanted to experiment with this just to see if I could um, use it as a top folding where the animation lines are going horizontally because some of the stamp sets have um, animation stamps that are horizontal as opposed to vertical. And then um, I also wanted to see if I could sort of make my own animation stamp using just regular stamps from my stash. And it looks like that's totally, totally possible and not, not super hard to do. This is a really simple animation, just, you know, the words happy birthday alternating and blinking on and off, but, um, but it totally works. And now that um, I kind of understand a little bit of how to build that animation. I might try to s see if I can do something more sophisticated, but I'm kind of happy with just that because being able to add your own custom sentiment is kind of cool. And the other thing that I was thinking to do was um, put uh, somebody's, the card recipient's name and using one of my pegs stamps to stamp out their name. So I could actually put like happy birthday, uh, Katie. And that way it's, it's not only a fun animated, um, stamp or card that is fun to play with, but then it's highly personalized, highly customized. And, um, it's truly, you know, a very one of a kind card. And so whoever gets it, for sure is going to really enjoy seeing their name animate. So I hope that um, that gives you some ideas for how to use um, this particular stamp set if you have it. And um, I'll, I'll put links to the MotionCraft website in the description box. Um, I'm not part of their affiliate program or anything. I just think it's a really neat uh, product and I'm having a lot of fun playing with it. So I have a couple more sets that I am um, planning on playing with. They have a large version of this, which is um, an A2 size card. So four and a quarter by five and a half, which is the standard size card that I generally tend to make. So, um, so I'll be playing with that one and that does come with, um, the, I'll sh I have it here. So one of the reasons why I got this was because, um, A2 size is, is typically what I make, but also panda bears are my favorite, um, animals. So <laughs> there's the panda monkeys and then probably bees. So, um, 
and they all happen to be really easy ones to color too. So, um, so that was an added motivation to buy this one. But not only that, just to show you real quick, um, I'll probably have a separate video for this one, but it does come with these really useful, very general purpose dies. So you've got the little um, pendant type banner. You've got um, this type banner, which is great for sentiments, like how they have it used here. And uh, some stars, heart balloons, and then just some apertures. But this even cuts a stitched line in your rounded square. So again, you know, I love how these sets are designed because they're very general purpose. If you didn't even have to do anything with the animated stamps and they would still be very usable and um, create really fun cards. Um, even just the, the format of this is really cool, um, just for the sliding mechanism, but the individual dies that come along with it are just great general purpose dies for um, decorating your cards with. So, or albums, mini albums. So I hope that you enjoyed this um, video and hopefully it gives you some ideas for how to use um, these cards or these um, motion craft animation stamps to not only do, you know, projects that they've designed, but also maybe um, kind of extend it a little bit further and play and experiment with other custom formats and animations that you could create using things out of your stash. Thanks so much for joining me. Until my next video, have a fantastic day and happy crafting. Bye!